Hey, scholars, good to be back with you. And today I'd like to talk about couples and moments. Now, if you've ever taken a strength of materials class, you probably heard the line that every couple has its moment. Well, that sounds pretty good, but what exactly does that mean? Well, we're going to figure it out. And by the way, I've been getting some complaints about sound quality, so I've got my spiff new microphone here today. Hopefully that'll help. So let's do the, the, the blackboard stuff first, the whiteboard stuff first, and then we'll get to some examples. So a moment is just the engineering word for a torque. It makes something spin. So a moment is a force acting at a distance. Hmm. Well, that's correct without being helpful. What, what, what do you mean? Well, how about this? This is my scooter, okay? That's the handlebars. Well, if I want to steer this thing, okay, I got to make that wheel turn, right? Well, the easiest way to do this is to grab the handlebars, apply a force this way on this handlebar, and a force that way on that handlebar, and turn. Okay, it's tough to make a true moment. You know, it's, 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 if I could stick my finger on the end of that and twist, I guess that would work. It's in, in practice, we almost always use forces to make moments. There's very seldom you see you're truly working with a pure moment. But if you're riding a scooter or a bicycle or something, pull back with one side, forward with the other, and the wheel turns. Okay, so there's two forces making a moment. All right. So I can put that down there without dropping it. There you go. So I've actually got two of these. Well, let's 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 erase the this and maybe replace it. Here's my handlebar on my scooter, looking from the top. Okay. If I have F1 there, and I'll get my head out of your way here in a second, and F2 there. All right. And the handlebar was symmetric, so I know what this distance is here. There. I've actually got two forces that combine to make a moment. So the moment is F1 times D plus F2 times D. Now, I've got to decide whether I want this to, which direction I want to be positive or negative rotation. So you always, always, always put your coordinate system there. Okay? If you don't know what else to do, you don't have a reason, use that as your coordinate system. This will work almost all the time. There are sometimes reasons when you want to use something different. But if you don't have a reason, pick that. It'll work. And the good news is this is a right-hand coordinate system. Right-hand means if I grab my right hand, rotate x into y, z comes out that way. Okay? That, that being the positive moment. I'm left-handed, so it's nice. I can use my right hand to identify coordinate systems and still be able to write. Okay? So with this, this force acting about that point right there is going to make a moment that's counterclockwise opposite my coordinate system. So this is actually going to be negative minus. All right. So that's how we do that. There's, there's the, the, the mathematical description. Let's go to some more examples maybe. Here's a cool, there's a model of a that uh, sort of helicopter looking thing that Michelangelo proposed. Now this couldn't possibly have worked, but it, it, it's nice. It's, it's a good, good uh, example here. To make this thing, this shaft spin, okay, there's got to be a torque somewhere, a moment. Well, that comes down here. There's, there's some uh, what amount to gears here. Well, I've got to make it work. It's, it needs a motive force. There need, needs to be some, some energy going into it. Well, if I could somehow just twist this, that would be great, but that's hard to do. So what they've got is, what he's got here is a little handle, and you spin that way. So I'm making a force that turns into a moment because of the, the length of this little handle here. Well, that's kind of old-fashioned. Let's go to something a little less old-fashioned. This. It's a little steam engine. Okay, we'll show, I'll show you up close here in a second. There's a little boiler here, and there's a flywheel that's going to turn, and there's a piston right there. Well, pistons don't make forces or moments; they make forces. But if I want this to spin, I've got to somehow turn a force into a moment. Well, that's what the crankshaft does. So rather than make this uh, 
too abstract. Let's go ahead and I'll zoom in on this. We'll fire this thing up and get it spinning, okay? Here's my little steam engine up close and you can see the parts of it. I've got a little boiler here and it's kind of warm so I'm not going to touch it. There's a flywheel over here, a drive shaft, and see that little thing right there? That little short arm there, that's called a throw on the drive sh on the crankshaft, I should say. So you, this is a single throw crankshaft. That is a connecting rod, there's a piston in there, and that's the cylinder. The cylinder rotates a little bit so it can stay lined up with the uh, uh, crankshaft or the uh, connecting rod there. So what's going to happen, is water's going to boil in there, steam's going to go through a little valve here and push. Now this piston can only push that way. So right there, the engine can't start because the force that is acting with no moment arm. Here, it can start. Now, it'll go that far, and there needs to be some, some uh, uh, force to make it want to go all the way back around. Well, that's what the flywheel's for. This has mass moment of inertia. It doesn't want to rotationally accelerate or decelerate. So, if it gets moving, and the piston can get it that far, the inertial force of the inertial moment of the uh, flywheel will make it go all the way back around there so it can keep turning. So this thing's pretty hot. I had it open earlier. This stuff is Trocken Brennstoff. It's actually a, uh, a solid fuel that gets used for these little toys. It also used to get used for camping fuel. For, they used to make stoves that ran off this stuff. I have no idea what it is. I'm going to break this in two here. Put a piece there and a piece there. Get the rest of this and we'll light it here. Let me see if I can do this without burning my fingers. Is that going to light? There we go. You can, you might, I don't know if you can see it on the video over there, but that's burning now. Okay, so I've been very careful not to place this under the sprinkler head in my office, so I'm not going to set, get an accidental shower here. And what's going to happen now is the heat from that fuel is going to heat the water in the, in the boiler here. That some of that water is going to turn to steam. Steam has lots of energy in it, it wants to expand. The steam will be allowed to expand in that cylinder, pushing the piston that way. Now this thing, this piston can only make a force that direction. I'm going to leave it right there for now, and we're going to let the water heat up. Okay, here we are, and the water's starting to boil. Now the seals on this little toy engine aren't maybe as tight as they could be. So you can see right there there's water boiling out of one of the little uh, openings that's supposed to be sealed with a screw, and there's a little bit of water dripping out of there. I don't want to touch that because it's hot. This thing can't start because there's no moment arm there. There's force, but no, mo no arm, so it can't make a moment. Now, that's not going to work, but let's get the engine right about there and see if it'll start. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Get it so it'll... There we go. Now it's running. Right. Let's try it again. Will it start? There it goes. Pretty cool, huh? All right, I'm going to stop it again. Now, right there, we're stuck. It can't run. It can't. This piston can't generate a moment because the arm is pointing that way instead of vertically, and there's no moment generated. There, there's no moment generated because the piston can only push. This one can't pull. Okay. Get it right to there. Get just a little over dead, dead center. There it goes again. Pretty sweet, huh? All right, well, there you have it. There's a force that makes a moment that makes a steam engine run. I hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.